and there's no sandbags, there's no perimeter controls. Um, the only control they have are the rumble plates. That's, that's not acceptable. That's something that we dealt with in, in, in the near past. Okay, so the skip back, this is that same site as with the uh, concrete washout. <clears throat> Notice that the perimeter controls, what little there was, are destroyed, and that the construction gate um, is just letting stuff spill out. So you have a couple of things, the violations that were listed for this, one of, is, one of which is the NPDES violations, no perimeter, the washout's destroyed, there's trash everywhere. If you look, you almost can see behind the right panel on that fence, it's pretty much a dumpster. Uh, but it's also a safety issue. They're blocking the sidewalk with sandbags and debris, um, something you need to add to your, your correct notice. This is the other, other end of that project. Um, you can see that uh, they didn't even make an attempt to protect the site. This is, a, unfortunately, one of our county contracts. Uh, some of the Portland cement was left out. This is not any time in the recent history. This is quite a while ago, so uh, we don't do this anymore. But, <laughs> but uh, leaving materials uncovered and, and spilled open, it needs to be contained. It needs to be properly cared for and covered. Toilets, always an issue. They do have secondary containment, but anytime we move them around, especially in a flood control area, we like to have plastic underneath it and another containment. Uh, just a safer way to get things done. Uh, but it also needs to be maintained. So if you're going to take that step, make sure it's maintained as you go. Track out, one of my pet peeves. Track out causes a lot of trouble, a lot of problems. NPDES is one of them. Typically caused by uh, trucking equipment, sometimes smaller vehicles, personal things. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here is the exit for a construction area, there's some rumble strips, but there's nothing else to protect from track out. What ends up happening is you get dust, debris, stuff all over the road, can cause windshield damage, can cause uh, site problems. Same project. Also can uh, blot out the travel lane lines. This creates a pretty serious safety hazard. So if you're driving down the road, all of a sudden you don't know what lane you're in, we all know what can happen after that. Uh, this particular instance uh, happened over a weekend and the CHP report told us that there were a couple minor accidents involved with this. Something that you also need to report. <clears throat> so this is something you need to take very seriously and get cleaned up immediately. Uh, yes, water quality is a big issue, but you also need to take immediate steps to protect public safety. Why is it important? Protection of waterways, beaches, fish, animals, public recreation, fishing, quality of life, all things important. Public safety, we all know that water on the road can be in danger, mud on the road can be deadly. We've seen some successes over the last few years. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but this particular site had an older picture in the earlier slides, uh, one of the disaster pictures. So you can see perimeter controls, construction uh, entrance, their stockpiles are covered, everything looks reasonably decent. This is the firehouse down in the South County, one of them. Uh, this construction entrance uh, was a big mess. They, with a little notice, they cleaned it up immediately, did some rock, did rumble strip, strips, took care of the perimeter control. The only thing I don't like is they're still blocking my sidewalk. Uh, that's kind of an access and safety issue. But as far as MPDS, they did a good job. This guy, if you, if you notice, there's tire tracks that come part way out. I think what happened was he started to pull out, realized what he was doing, pulled back in and hosed off his wheels. I think that's only because inspection was watching, but he still did it. Materials protection, it's really important to cover the materials that you've got, concrete or any of the other uh, construction materials, keep them protected so they don't enter the waterway. This particular site <coughs> uh, looks good now, mostly. You can see that the dumpster's over full and uh, there's a whole bunch of debris behind it. The previous picture from the earlier afternoon would have shown you that the entire drive was covered, all that stone was covered in mud. 
There's trash everywhere. It was a true disaster. So after, uh, in order to clean it up, they cleaned it up. They did the perimeter controls. They took of everything except the dumpster yet. They had, they did that the next day. Site maintenance is important. You can see here that uh, preparations have been done. There's some sandbags, some chevrons, streets relatively clean. Storm preparation. This is stuff I like to see. I wanna see perimeter controls, sandbags out, um, a stack of sandbags in case a rain event is larger than what you anticipated. Uh, one thing that we do ask for, uh, at least in the county, is if you're gonna put sandbags in our local depressions or in the curb line, throw a delineator or a cone out for safety. That way, if uh, mom and pop are jog jogging on the weekend, you don't find them there Tuesday morning laying in the gutter. This is an example of some of the larger BMP placements. Uh, you notice there's straw wattles on the slope at uh, contours and then they're covering it with a uh, binder. There's a couple pictures of these. This is an example on the left side of our reporting documentation. And uh, in the middle is a copy of uh, our correct notice. It's really important when you do these reports, um, I'm sure you have your own forms, make sure it's complete, make sure that you do a really quality job of what the notes need to say. If you need to come back for a follow-up inspection, put that in there. If you don't, put that in there as well. Um, if there's specific violations, uh, add those in there. That way, if someone else is gonna come out and cover it, or if you're gonna you know, come out, like say a week later, and you have 20 of these to do, you don't have to guess on where you're at or do your inspections over again. It's already something that's uh, kind of following the momentum. And always take pictures. Um, you can see pictures on the right side. Um, the top two are kind of a mess. The bottom was what we wanna see. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Well, right now we were gonna have a presentation from the regional board and what I'm gonna do just real quick is, fortunately he had some car issues today, Michael Kashek. Um, but at the end of his presentation, he did have some takeaways and just going to um, run through those real quickly and then we'll get you guys out of here early. Um, and then this presentation, we're coordinating with him, but we believe it'll be available on uh, the county's website. We just need to make sure that he's, he's uh, good with that, but I'm sure that won't be a problem. So one of the things that he focuses on, on the common issues to focus on for construction sites um, is on the small sites. Um, he's saying the QSP inspections aren't being conducted. Um, the reports aren't being maintained. I think this is a lot of what everybody's seeing on construction sites. Um, and that there's not properly trained um, individuals to carry out the QSP uh, duties. Um, inlet protection is also an issue and then uh, perimeter and track out controls. And then um, for the larger sites, um, and his, his definition of small sites is one to five acres, a little bit different than what we talked about today, and his larger sites are greater than five acres. Um, so all of these would be subject to the construction general permit. But for the larger sites, it looks like um, same kind of issues except for um, recommendations aren't being uh, to the superintendents aren't carried out and the QSP doesn't follow up on the corrective actions and then the same issues on inlet protection and perimeter controls. And then the last thing I'll just go through real quick um, is his approach to help sites achieve compliance and he mentions uh, stressing the importance of implementing effective combination of sediment and erosion controls. I know we heard that from Scott today so it, it does need to be that combination. Um, and then he talks about really educating the construction sites on this cumulative effect so that site personnel really understand why they're doing these things. If they understand why they're implementing all these BMPs and what the effects are downstream, they might be more willing to, to implement them. Um, and then the last thing, which is actually something that we heard yesterday from the region, San Diego Regional Board is that you know, enforcement actions are effective in getting dischargers um, to return to compliance. So make sure that you're using those effectively, but also educating them so that as you're walking a site and you're pointing out things that are wrong, 
identify why it is wrong, why, you know, educate on why it needs to be done in a different way. So with that, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. And before I let you go, I just wanted to take a moment to thank our guest presenters today. We really appreciate getting different perspectives. And I really hope that that gives you inspiration as you go out this year. Maybe some sites you might see that you would want to share with fellow inspectors next year. We'd love to invite other people to come up and present next year. So if that's something you see a site when you're out there this year, take some pictures, take some notes, contact me, and we'd love to have you come out next year. We also want to take a moment to thank Cypress for hosting us today. Thank you. Cypress staff, and I apologize, I forgot to mention where the restrooms are, so if you head out and you need to use the restroom, there's some in the building behind you as you head out, but there's not too many there. So if you go down the stairs and hang a right at the sidewalk, you'll find some just outside in the buildings. Michael? Sure. Did everyone hear what Michael said about having perimeter controls inside your site? You want to have sandbags inside your site if you have areas inside your construction site that you're trying to prevent track on onto or track off. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments or questions? Well, thank you all very much for coming today. Have a great day.